Today I'm painting a honey crisp apple and the reason I chose this apple is it has a lot of different colors in it. It has red, a little bit of pink, yellows, and greens. So um, that's the challenge. And I start with a uh, just a plain uh, gessoed board. And um, in the background I'm channeling Cezanne here where he doesn't actually make all the lines realistic uh, as you can see in my um, horizon line and then um, also I'll channel him a little with the fruit and making it a little unrealistic with really saturated colors and I use you'll see at the end I put more pink than the actual um, uh, apple <laughs> that's what we're painting today um, so I don't have black. What I'm using for black is the darkest darks. I have uh, transparent earth orange, viridian green, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue. Um, I have some sort of Persian pink. It's kind of like a, um, a warm, uh, opaque pink. And then I have a, uh, I think it's called Persian rose. And then I have, um, a naphthal red uh, and then I have a permanent yellow and white so and I'm using two whites I have a brilliant white and a, a brilliant yellow I think actually which is a, a transparent white and then I have a titanium zinc white because I don't really use lead white very much so um, yeah, so I marked out the middle here. I do not show you my palette because last time I had the palette on the same table, um, the whole t table was shaking and making the whole video jiggle. So I took it off and um, I don't have another camera set up over the palette. Uh, maybe if I could get some sort of tripod that could uh, point down on my palette, then I could do that or maybe set up a mirror or something and we could film both at the same time. But for the meantime, or if I get a stable, more stable uh, table situation, um, then I can do that. So um, I'll just tell you as much as I can what I'm doing here. So I'm just trying to, um, I just keep looking at the apple and all the different planes and mixing solid uh, sheets of color. Um, and I'll even hold my brush up with one eye to that area of the apple and see if I've got it as close. I want it to almost blend uh, what I see in my eye, uh, blend into the apple. Now this right here, that uh, white, that yellow, or I'm sorry, that light pink I just put on is not as pink as it is. It's a little exaggerated. So I'm using a of the palette knife here for the darkest colors just because um, I want them to be really loose and I've talked about this before um, I'm I'll probably change them a little but putting them on with a soft brush just makes them too unrealistic so um, I have a lot more flexibility if I keep uh, if I use the knife which just kind of puts it in the general area and I also kind of scrape a little with the knife because it's got the hard uh, edges and um, so you can see on the right side of the shadow how it's transparent and it just has some nice effects to it so the backgrounds a mixture of, of Viridian I'm showing you my palette because I'm out of red but I'm not going to add any red. I'm going to keep using this palette even though there's no space left and just mix uh, grays. And I don't want, I I did a video about uh, Bor Borlaine, I think it was, Borlaine's Smart, and how he used several different palettes to always keep his colors clean. But he was painting the ocean. And with this small painting, I actually want to start toning it down at this point. I've got, um, I've got to tighten it up. Um, it's not going to be a psychedelic apple. So instead of adding more red, I do admit I added a little yellow at the last minute. I mean really the last minute because I noticed there was a lot more yellow on the apple and I I needed more. So 
and the the permanent yellow just doesn't stretch as far as when I use a cadmium yellow so um, so yeah all right so here again just taking what's left on my palette and mixing uh, more or less of pretty much the three primary colors to um, get all those subtle variations in the the green that mixes and this is probably one of the more challenging parts is where the green and the red come together so um, that's why I didn't want to add any more paint either to my palette um, just adding the little stem here or the start of the stem just suggesting it so we still need to finish up all the white space and um, again I'm just using mostly my soft sable brush and uh, just color matching and mixing um, starting to use a little bit of the ultramarine blue and a little bit of the viridian mixed with the red the naphtha red is really nice because it holds its color unlike um, some reds which if you ever tried to paint a red rose uh, and they just don't stay red they turn pink and the um, naphthal reds really are good at holding on to the red colors all right just finishing up um, I need to work on the shape a little bit and then just filling in the background just adding some highlights and this isn't a super realistic apple it's probably better if you look at it from a little farther away and then it'll look more like an apple um, but that's kind of my style. It's very loose and painterly and it's fun to paint this way and it, to me it looks delicious. It looks like a painting not a photograph and that's kind of what I I like the um, to see the paint uh, when I'm painting. I know someday I'll probably paint with tiny brushes, but, and I started out using tinier brushes, but um, it's, I, I just am amazed by people that use really tiny brushes for the whole painting. It's great for detail though, for sure, if you're doing portraits, that's for sure. And again, just trying to finish some of the details, which uh, like most artists already know, um, save the details for, for last. All right, we're just about done here. I think I'm going to maybe clean up. I, I know a lot of times one of my errors is I'll leave a section that looks just really odd that I don't notice because I'm like right close up so it's good to either step back like six feet away they say the cones of your eyes actually can't um, your brain can't and take it until you're like six feet away from it your whole peripheral vision and everything needs to be about six feet away for your retina to process it as a, um, a whole picture so you stepping back really helps and um, what also helps me is sometimes taking photos of it and just putting it on the computer and looking at it and that's how sometimes I, I actually go back and repaint a little area here or there so that's what I'm thinking of right here is thinking you know is there any area that's making it look wrong and just trying to correct those areas Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've added a schedule to my About 
uh, my channel page. So go check it out and subscribe if you like this video and want more.